Back in May of this year, I posted a video titled How to Spot a Borderline from a Mile Away. In it, I pointed out that one of the traits of many borderline women was to bring harm to people in their lives and then to play up their own victimhood when the true victims complained about the way they were treated. There's even a term coined for that. It's called DARVO, or Deny and Reverse Victim Order. Link in the low bar. Subsequent to that video, dozens of borderline women have come into the comments to prove that I am exactly 100% correct in my assessment. Some attention to those women, which they so obviously crave, coming up next on An Ear for Men. Hi everyone, Paul Elam here. Welcome back to An Ear for Men. In my video, How to Spot a Borderline from a Mile Away, we took a look at the diagnostic criteria for borderline personality disorder and how borderline women had a negative impact on people in their lives, particularly men. The reaction was pretty predictable across the board. There was a strong, favorable reaction from men and even a couple of women who had experienced abuse in this way. There was also an equally predictable a herd of shrieking cats who streamed in to gush their outrage that I was not treating them like special snowflakes. And despite my proclamation in the video that their powerless wailing would fall on deaf ears, they railed on, and are still, in fact, throwing tantrums in the comments six months later. Let's take a look at what a few of the several hundred comments look like. Heather Claffin said, BPD is very close to PTSD. So would you make a video condemning soldiers who've been traumatized? BPD is when someone is trapped in the primal freeze, fight, or flight mind because of something triggering her. If you were a woman raped or abused, you can develop this. So why are you telling people this shit? If I met a lady who had been raped, I'd understand that there may be some semi-permanent damage, some trust with the opposite sex to rebuild. I wouldn't expect men to dodge her like the plague just because of her misfortune. If this was your sister, your mother, or your daughter, would you not surely be less dickish? Well, first of all, Heather, BPD is not close to PTSD. And for one, I'm insulted that you would compare them to combat veterans. But going on, there are many personality disordered women who were not abused as children. And indeed, some borderline personalities confabulate wild and dramatic tales of abuse for the sake of getting attention and grooming white knights in their lives. T.L. Andrews takes it a step further and says, Wow, you old man asshole. You forgot to say stay away from Jews, Muslims, Blacks, Iraqis, Homos, Caitlyn Jenner, you racist fuck KKK redneck. (laughs) Well, wow, TL, you sure put me in my place. Not sure what else to say except thanks for making my point. Next, we move on to Hannah, not to be confused with Hannah Wallen, who says, Sexist. You can delete my comment, but you can't delete your disgusting personality. Well, no, Hannah, your comment was not deleted. It remains up and becomes a part of the record here. Moving on, we have Riley Tompkins, who says, I understand you're doing your job, which is to protect men in abusive relationships, partially. But as well, you could have went into more detail about why these people do the things they do. Most people can develop compassion if they understand why. And that would make it easier for most men to make an informed decision about whether they should leave or not. Comparing people with personality disorders to junkies is callous, man. That's just harsh. Well, nice try, Riley, but no dice. Since you made a thoughtful comment, though, I'm going to give you a thoughtful answer. Encouraging men to understand why abusive borderline women are abusive takes a second seat to encouraging men to get away from the abuse. And that is usually where men need to learn the most. Teaching men to empathize and have compassion for wounded women is like teaching them to have facial hair or to pee standing up. It's something they've been doing already all of their lives. 
In fact, it is that quest in men to put their own needs and their own safety aside so they can rescue the underdog woman that gets them into so much trouble. And it is precisely the instinct that borderlines use to manipulate their way into control. You said that most people can develop compassion if they understand why. What I am saying here is that it is not the victims of personality disorders that need to develop compassion. That's the job of the borderlines, who are often experts on what makes people tick, but lack the compassion to do anything but use that knowledge for harm. I'm going to read another comment for you, Riley. It's one from J.J. Flash, who in part said the following. I dated a woman with borderline personality disorder. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. She was a pathological liar, manipulated me with every word, triangulated and gaslighted me for six months. She was a siren, fucked like a porn star to keep me addicted, until I found out on Valentine's Day via a text that she cheated on me with an ex-boyfriend. She denied the whole thing, then reversed course cried and begged for me to take her back, upon which I said a big no. Good for you. Turns out a friend of mine, by coincidence, called me the next day, saying he saw my girlfriend, he didn't know we broke up, active on Tinder. She had absolutely no empathy, love-bombed me, then devalued me, and tried to destroy me. I was left a shell of a man when I decided to get out. Took me a long time to regain my self-esteem. It was an eye-opening experience. That is what J.J. Flash had to say, and it is something I've seen repeatedly over 30 years of working with men. If your answer to a man going through that kind of hell is to tell him he needs to have understanding and sympathy for the woman doing it to him, then what does that say about your level of understanding and sympathy for him? All of this speaks to a larger lesson, which was played out in the comments. There is a strong tendency in society, in the mental health professions, and for damn sure in personality disordered women, to darvo. What you see in the comments I quoted, and in dozens more if you follow the link and read through them, is a very simple game. It's called, I'm the real victim, not you. Did I break your heart? Well, I'm the victim. Did I clean out your bank account? I'm the victim. Did I fuck your friends? I'm the victim. Don't you dare talk about what I did to you without offering me sympathy and understanding for what I did. Don't you dare refuse to embrace my excuses. If you don't set aside your pain and make room for me to bathe in your sympathy, then you're an abusive asshole and you deserve what I did to you. That is what these people are demanding. And that is precisely what men need to reject with extreme prejudice. And hey, if you want to don the armor, mount that white horse, and ride in to rescue someone high risk who will likely stick a knife in your back for your troubles, more power to you. You're either a better man than me or just a chump. In that, I am sure you will have your answer, just as I'll have mine. But I dredge up this entire discussion again for a reason. The traits we talk about with borderline personality disorders, the emotional and sexual manipulation, the fluctuation between pedestalizing you and demonizing you, the use of shame tactics to control you, the incessant demands for approval and the pathological demand for you to settle for excuses in lieu of accountability are all destructive. But in fairness to the borderlines, they don't have the market cornered on this shit list of relationship downers. You could never encounter another borderline in your life and still get destroyed by one or more of these problems because they are now woven into the fabric of modern femininity. Want to bet on the incidence of personality disorders in the feminist community? The borderline personality is a helpful guide on what's wrong, not with women, but with the society that enables women to operate by dysfunctional rules. In fact, if you get the point of these videos, you can scrap everything you know about borderline personality disorder and just focus on the behavioral issues in women to avoid and the development of the boundaries necessary to send them packing when you see problems. 
Part of those boundaries is an understanding that you don't owe anyone abusing you, male or female, BPD or not, any of your understanding or sympathy. You are not obligated to sign on as their babysitter or emotional pincushion. You are well within your rights and within the bounds of good mental health to save your compassion and understanding for those who can reciprocate. You don't need to be angry or vindictive toward those who can't, but you don't need to be responsible for them either. And that is it for another talk from an ear for men, reminding you that I will be hosting a showing of the Red Pill movie on Thursday, December 15th in Houston. Tickets and other information are in the low bar. Be sure to join us for the party afterward. As always, I hope you've enjoyed today's talk, even if you haven't, and see you next time.